Hello, welcome to my video. This is an Iwayoi storyline that does not take place in the canon Hekayu universe. A friendly warning, this video does contain cursing. As always, I do hope you enjoy. Now on to the video. In which Iwayzumi explores his attraction towards an interesting boy. Friday. 6.17pm. Gay not European. Iwa. How's the date going? Why would he answer if he's on his date? Iwa's lonely ass always responds within 60 seconds. If he doesn't answer then we'll know it's going well. Oh. Smart. Thanks. Screw off I do not reply that quickly. 56 seconds. I. Lmeo. Anyway. If you responded this fast. The date is ass. Smelling like a public restroom. Ugh oh, damn it I thought this blind date would go really well. Right. We practically hooked him up with his perfect match. Leave it to Iwa to mess good things up. I'm saying dog. Comma hope he messes me up next. Ayo. Me too though Loki. Jesus freaking Christ stop that. And the person's not here yet. Really? Yeah. That's really unlike them. They always show up to stuff hella early. Then apologize for being late like they're not 20 minutes early. Maybe something happened? I don't know. Maybe. I know it could reasonably be traffic or something. But. But this feels like a bad sign. I will don't overthink it. I really can't help it. I haven't exactly been doing well in the dating department. Or. You just haven't found someone that you're really into yet. For real man don't sweat it. Just try to have fun on dates. Don't feel rushed to find that date that leads to something more. I really hope this is the one though. No dedos. I'm tired of you third wheeling on my dates with Hachi. I'm starting to think he likes you more than me. When you're his boyfriend, why wouldn't he like me more? Kid. Meow. I were acting all cheeky like he's not about to piss from nervousness cause of this date. I'm not nervous what the fuck. By the way. What will they be wearing again? Big blue sweater. We've been over this. Says he's not nervous then asks about the fit for the fifth time. For real. Is there something wrong with making sure? No not at all. Except we all know that you remember just fine. And you start questioning stuff when you're nervous. Dot dot dot. I hate how you've got me all figured out. That's our job bae. Matsuko agreeing. But seriously. Just chill. Alright alright. I'm just ready to get this over with. Get this over with. It's a date. Not a crappy family reunion. Why do you always seem unexcited to go on dates but then you keep looking for them? Cause he's lonely lol da. Shut the fuck up. I just want a partner, you know. But like I said, I'm not great when it comes to dating. Um. Well I genuinely believe this date will be different. Same here. We found you a real good date. Now stop talking to us and wait for them to show up. And remember, have fun. And tell us how it went after. Good luck. Iwezumi shut off his phone and leaned back in his seat. He's sitting inside a local Italian restaurant with walls of earthy tones, and it's small with bright, droopy ballooning light bulbs that make the worn wooden furniture and old paintings shine. It has an almost homey feel, aided by the tables full of friends and family laughing as they ate. Iwezumi's date had suggested this place, apparently. The place looks nice, Iwezumi thought. Though the place might have been a whole lot nicer if his date was there. Instead, Iwezumi is sitting at this table for two alone, feeling a little sorry for himself as he watches a couple burst into laughter at a nearby table. He's mentally preparing himself to have to wave off the waitress again because, yes, he was still waiting for someone, all the while this too damn bright light is shining right into his very sensitive eyes. And then he starts to wonder, is this really worth it? Is he really so lonely that he allows his idiot friends to set him up on blind dates? Apparently, yes. But right now, after half an hour of waiting, he's decided that he's just tired. Just as he's about to give it up and get the hell out of this place, the sound of chiming bells rings in Iwezumi's ears. He looks to the restaurant's entrance to see a guy rushing in, huffing and puffing like he's just run a marathon. A faint red is dusted across his seemingly soft face as he wipes at his brow, and his mousy brown hair bounces a little as he tries to catch his breath. Though he's lean and relatively tall, the baby blue knit sweater he's sporting is so big that he looks like he's being swaddled, the sleeves even reaching over his fingertips. He's wearing ripped skinny jeans to match, and his white sneakers have little blue charms on their laces. He's pretty attractive, actually. Iwezumi does a double take at the sweater, and his eyes widen with realization. Before Iwezumi can call out, the guy happens to catch Iwezumi's gaze, and after a moment, his eyes, too, widen. He scurries over to the table that Iwezumi sat at and, oh wow, he's even cuter up close. He rushedly pulls on the chair across from Iwezumi and plops down onto it, talking way too fast as he does so. Oh my god, you must be my date right? You're definitely my date. Oh my god, I'm so 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 sorry for being half an hour late. I left my house early and everything but there was a huge accident on the road and wow, the hold up was insanity, and not even because of the actual accident, but because everyone and their mom wanted to peek at the wreck as they drove past it as if some people don't have places they have to. Whoa whoa whoa. You're talking a mile a minute. The guy froze and sank a little low in his seat. Sorry, I do that when I'm stressed. I'm leaving all sorts of bad first impressions huh? It's, it's fine. You're here now, right? Iwezumi was met with a soft smile. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, introductions. The guy suddenly perks up, straightening his back and sticking his hand out with a warm grin. I'm Ikoa Toru, nice to meet you. Iwezumi reaches out his hand to shake Ikoa's, which is surprisingly firm and calloused. Iwezumi observes. I'm Iwezumi Hajime, but you can just call me Iwa. It's nice to meet you too. 
Their hands leave each other's grasp, moving to rest at their respective sides of the table. Thanks for being so cool about me being this late. Don't mention it. No, I have to. I'm surprised you even waited for me this long. Iwazumi notices that there's still a light flush on Okoa's cheeks, and he's fiddling with his fingers at the edge of the table. Are you nervous? Okoa visibly gulps. Yeah. It's just, I've never been on a blind date before. Really? MHM. I'm guessing you've been on a blind date before? Iwazumi ran a hand through his hair with a sigh. Oh, have I? Okoa giggles, and Iwazumi swears the room grows about ten times brighter. Not much luck with them? Not at all. How come? I, uh, is it really appropriate to talk about dating failure on a first date with someone? Okoa shrugs. I don't know, maybe not, but I still wanna know. If you're willing to share. Well, MHM. I rarely click with the people I go on dates with. And when we do click and end up going exclusive, I realize they only piqued my interest and that I wasn't into them enough to want to date. Or, I realize I never liked them that way in the first place, and... Oko is looking at Iwazumi with his hands folded on the table, and the intensity of his stare makes Iwazumi turn away as he mutters. I sound like a douche, don't I? A little bit. But I kinda get it. Maybe you're rushing the dating process? Iwazumi looks back to Ikoa. I've thought of that, but, I don't think that's it. I never go exclusive with someone any earlier than five dates. That sounds so textbook. Did you pick that up from a magazine? Dot dot dot. Online article. Ikoa bursts into laughter, clutching his chest and forcing Iwazumi to endure it for about two minutes until Ikoa calms down. I'm sorry, that's so cute. Iwakun, it doesn't have to be five dates. You can take as long as you need. Iwazumi is about to respond when a low grumble comes from his stomach. Hey, sorry, you've waited a while to eat, haven't you? Have you been here before? No, I haven't. Okoa gasps, then swipes up a menu sitting on the table to point at an item. You should try this, it's my favorite. Cassie EOA Pepe. Okoa giggles. Cacho E Pepe. What's that? Cheesy spaghetti with pepper. It's simple, but it's really nice. Oh, I shouldn't, I'm lactose intolerant. Oh, same. Then why? What can I say, I love cheese. The right side of Okoa's lip quirks up to form a lopsided grin, and there's playfulness in his eyes. I just gaslight myself into believing that lactose intolerance is a social construct every time I eat dairy and deal with the consequences later. You're quite the character aren't you? I'll take that as a compliment. So, what are you ordering? I'll just get spaghetti and meatballs. Ikoa rises an eyebrow. Playing it safe? Iwazumi smiles. Yeah, I'm not trying to wreck my toilet later like you. Ikoa's eyes squeeze shut as he laughs, and when they reopen, they are narrowed at Iwazumi. Maybe you should start taking risks, Iwakun. Iwazumi wants to reply with something clever, but something about the look in Okoa's eyes renders Iwazumi completely speechless. Unaware of the effect he's had on Iwazumi, Okoa brings the menu to his eyes and continues to chatter away. We should get appetizers. The garlic bread is a must, and the speedini is really nice. They are beef and onion kebabs, if you've never had them. Iwazumi really doesn't know anything about Italian food, so he just nods, saying that he's willing to try anything Okoa recommends so long as it's mostly dairy-free. Okoa waves down the waitress, and the two quickly order before turning back to each other. So, okoa kun. You can drop the honorific. Oh. Okay, then. Okoa. How come you decided to try blind dating? Hey, well, I've always thought it sounded fun. I've been out of the dating arena for, what, two years now? I keep myself really busy, and I've never made time for going out of my way to meet new people. In fact, anyone I've ever gotten into a relationship with was a friend I had for some time before that. But I'm starting a new chapter in my life, I guess, so I wanted to give this kind of dating a shot. Okoa's eyes sparkle. Not that you have any competition, but make this date worthwhile for me, okay? Iwazumi's eyebrows raise in amusement. That's a big request, but I'll see what I can do. Ikoa's smile grows. Perfect. Some time later, the waitress pops up beside Iwazumi with a tray filled with their food, which Ikoa starts digging into before Iwazumi can even say thank you to the waitress. Gee, looks like you were hungrier than me. Ikoa sheepishly looks up from his plate of spaghetti, slurping up a noodle before opening his mouth to speak. If this were a test on leaving good impressions, I would not get passing marks. Sorry, I should have at least tried to look cute while eating. Guess my mouth runs a mile a minute for things other than talking. As Ikoa shoves another forkful of spaghetti into his mouth, Iwazumi thinks of a sex joke that he definitely should not say and, God, Matsukoa and Hanamaki are terrible influences on him. Iwazumi hums and gets a forkful of his own meal, swallowing it down along with his crude joke. It's fine. You're kind of quirky, but it makes you, fun. You think? I do. Ikoa smiles, then sets down his fork and props his elbows up on the table to rest his chin on his hands. You know, Matsun and Maki talked about you like you were a dweeb. Matsun and? Oh, Matsukoa and Hanamaki. Iwazumi's eye twitches. Of course they did. Ha, huh, yeah, a small part of me was worried that I'd be meeting someone in a jiki jetup that would give me the ike. Honestly I don't blame you, those two hang out with some with us. With that being said, how do you know them? I used to be Matson's neighbor, we became friends not too long after he moved in. I incidentally met Maki when I went over to Matson's house one day, and I've been friends with him since then. Oh, that's, sweet. I got blackout drunk with those dumbasses one night at a mutual's housewarming party a couple years ago and haven't been able to get rid of them since. Ikoa grins broadly, and it's clear there's a loud laugh waiting to escape behind his teeth. That is, hilarious, and, so like them. 
You can laugh if you want. No, I'm holding it back. Coach always says my laughs are indecent. Coach? Oh, yeah, I play baseball. Okua lifts his arm and pats his bicep. Underneath this cute sweater is pure muscle. I'm in my last semester of college, so I'm playing intercollegiate right now, but I've got a contract that'll let me go straight into the NPB once I graduate. Oh, wow, that's super impressive. Congrats. Thanks. Okua smiles and gives Iwazumi a wink. If the rest of this date goes well, I'll let you watch me play sometime as a treat. Iwazumi blinks once, twice, and he still can't process the statement. How was this guy so jokingly bold? Okua swiftly changes the subject, once again not realizing what he's done to Iwazumi. When I'm not on the field though, I turn into a little old grandmother. That's what my friends say at least. Just because I like to knit, I knit this sweater actually. And go on nature walks with my dog. And tend to my tomato garden. And Iwazumi cuts Okua off with a chuckle. Sorry, that sounds exactly like my grandma. Except she grows peppers. Okua juts out his bottom lip in a pout, and though that's something that would usually make Iwazumi cringe, he finds it cute on Okua. Oh whatever. What are your hobbies? I don't have many, actually. I spend most of my time at work or hanging out with friends. Ooh, what's your job? I'm a personal trainer. Can I get a free consultation? Okua wiggles his eyebrows, and Iwazumi can't help but snort. Maybe a discounted one. I'll take it. Well, I'm guessing that working out is one of your hobbies? Um, guess so, yeah. I also like watching documentaries. Oh, uh, what kind? One's about crazy crimes. I could never watch that shit. It'd have me sleeping with one eye open. Especially the ones about people who live alone getting murdered in mysterious ways. What? Those are my favorites. Oh, uh, you're sick. Watch it. I could commit a murder you know. Dot dot dot. I sounded like a total creep just now. Sorry. I'm just joking. Okua laughs and leans back in his chair. This conversation strangely reminds me of this one time I almost accidentally buried my friend alive. You almost accidentally what? Yeah, so. Just as Okua's about to begin what's sure to be an interesting story, the waitress comes to politely give them the bill, bowing slightly before she leaves. Okua snatches the bill from the table before Iwazumi can even look at it. Okua. I'm paying. You really don't have to. This is my apology for keeping you waiting earlier. We can at least split the bill. No thank you. Iwazumi sighs, and from the way Okua is smiling, he must know it's a sign that Iwazumi's given up. As Okua fishes out his wallet from his back pocket, Iwazumi looks up to a nearby clock. It's only been about half an hour since Okua showed up, they hadn't taken long to eat at all. Iwazumi has actually been enjoying himself, and, surprisingly, this wasn't a date he wanted to be over. Hey, uh, Okua. Yeah? Do you, have plans tonight? No, why? I just, wanted to talk more. Oh, like me already I would come? I, it's just, it's only been half an hour, and, hey I'm just teasing. I'm really enjoying your company. You're, down to earth. It's a nice change of pace. And, I was just about to tell my near murder story. Besides, a half hour date is too short for me. So, as I was saying, Okua apparently has a plethora of stories to share, each one more unbelievable and comical than the last. The conversation is fluid with no stops or awkward moments, all raw and an unscripted stream of consciousness that allows Iwazumi to experience genuineness like he never had on a date before. Okua has a way of speaking that has Iwazumi entranced from start to finish, and Iwazumi realizes that it's because Okua could describe even the most mundane, silliest incidents like they were adventures. Okua's stories show Iwazumi how entertaining, and ridiculous, he may be, but Iwazumi also sees the founded confidence and thoughtfulness behind every word he speaks. Iwazumi even feels compelled to talk about himself, which he rarely does, and Okua hooks onto all his words like Iwazumi's the most interesting person in the world. Right now, though, Iwazumi's positive that Okua wins that title. Even with all the stories and hidden lessons that Okua shared thus far, Iwazumi knows that he's only scratched the surface of Okua Toru. The date finally ends when Iwazumi and Okua are practically kicked out of the restaurant once it's closing time, and the two walk slowly back to their cars together, using their phone's flashlights to light the way. I can't believe it's 9 o'clock. You're telling me. I thought we'd be there an hour max. Oh, did your online article tell you that's the ideal length for a date? Dot dot dot. It was the magazine this time. Okua laughs, a full, hardy laugh, and lightly grips Iwazumi's shoulder. Once it's time for them to walk in opposite directions, Okua spins around to face Iwazumi fully. Hey, I had a lot of fun. Did you? I did actually. You're a great date Okua. Even in the dark, Iwazumi can see Okua smile. Good to hear. You're not so bad yourself. So, can I have your number? Oh, yeah, of course. As they exchange phones to type in their numbers, Okua continues speaking. I'll text you soon to talk about our next date. I'm thinking, the aquarium? Would you be into that? Iwazumi shakes his head and laughs quietly. What? Am I supposed to be more subtle about asking for a second date or something? I'm into you, you're into me, screw that shit. Iwazumi laughs a little louder as they hand their phones back to each other, though Okua's words are gnawing hard at his mind. I'm into you, you're into me. Iwazumi's connection and interest in Okua, was this truly what being into someone felt like? Had he really not yet met the right person for him all along until... Iwakun. Iwazumi jolts out of his thoughts. Oh, uh, ah, uh, sorry, were you saying something? I was saying goodnight, silly. Okua gives Iwazumi a small wave. I'm really looking forward to seeing you again. 
Iwezumi returns the wave and offers a smile. Yeah, me too. Good night, Oikoa. They turn away from each other and walk their separate ways, and Iwezumi thinks that this, perhaps, is the best date he's ever had. Kindechi, I'm home. Iwezumi tugs his shoes off at the door of his shared apartment, looking to the couch to see his roommate turn around. Oh, Iwezumi-san, you're back. Hey, turn it. Ah, come on, that nickname is mean. Iwezumi hums as he walks through the apartment to the small sink in the kitchen, turning on the faucet to scrub his hands. I can call you Onion Head instead. Why not just Kindechi? Nah. Iwezumi hears Kindechi sigh and get up from the couch. Soon, Kindechi is beside Iwezumi at the sink with his arms folded across his chest. Anyway, where in the world were you? Iwezumi shakes off his hands and grabs a nearby rag to dry them, leaning with his back against the sink. He slightly tilts his head at Kindechi with a quizzical expression. I was on my date. I know I told you. I mean, you said it was a dinner date, and you left here at 5.30. What kind of dinner date lasts so long that you're back home past 9.30? A really good one, apparently. Even after we finished eating, we just kept talking. It was pretty enjoyable. Seriously? Seriously. Kindechi whistles. Well Iwezumi-san, this person must be the real deal if they got you to ditch your one-hour date rule. Oikoa was the real deal all right. He had a dynamic personality and was easy to connect with, making you feel as though you had been good friends for years. He radiated warmth and friendliness, and the self-assuredness he exuded was contagious. And, on top of all that, he was really good looking. On Iwezumi's list for what could be considered a good match, Oikoa checked off all the items and then some. Instead of saying all that though, Iwezumi smiles and speaks simple words. Yeah, I'd say he is. Ah, uh, not giving details? No. Maybe after a couple more dates. Huh, I'm mostly impressed that Matsukoa-san and Hanamaki-san actually managed to hook you up with someone you get along with this well. I've never heard you sound genuinely excited at the idea of follow-up dates. So, you can actually picture yourself being his boyfriend? Iwezumi looks up for a moment to think, painting the thought on the ceiling before him. But as soon as the image of him and Okoa's boyfriends begins to materialize before him, doing couple white things and all, an extremely unpleasant feeling washes over him. God no. Dot dot dot. What? But, you're planning to go on more dates with him? Not everyone falls in love at first sight like you did with Kunami, Kindechi. Kindechi turns pink, and Iwezumi has to fight the urge to tease him a little. That's not the point. And, that's also not what I mean. I just don't get how you're gonna go on more dates with someone with plans of an eventual exclusive relationship when you can't even picture being with them to begin with. I think he's really cool, though, and I want to see him again. Maybe I'll be able to picture us being together after the second date. Maybe? I, I know it sounds weird, okay? But I've always been weird with romance. Kindechi opens his mouth like he wants to say something, then sighs and glances away. If you say so. Oi, what were you gonna say turn it? Something that'd probably upset you, Iwezumi-san. I'm gonna go get ready for bed now. Good night. Kindechi walks away from the kitchen, leaving Iwezumi alone and frowning. So what if he didn't experience romantic attraction in the same way that Kindechi and his other friends did? Admittedly, it made Iwezumi seem a bit backward and even odd. Still, that was the way he'd always been. The attraction he has towards Oikoa is unique, though, and it gives him unbridled confidence that things would be different this time. About two weeks later, Iwezumi is striding towards the entrance of the Sendai Uminomori Aquarium. Though it's still early in the day, it is a bit busy with sizable lines of bustling people waiting to get an admission ticket. Iwezumi checks his watch and, seeing that he's about 20 minutes early, thinks it'd be best to wait in line for him and Oikoa. Just as he's about to pull his phone from his back pocket to text this to Oikoa, he feels a tap on his shoulder, and Iwezumi whips his head around to come face to face with a grinning Oikoa. Oikoa is wearing a knit, seafoam green sweater vest over a white, long sleeve collared shirt. He's also got on light washed denim jeans, and his white sneakers have little green charms on their laces today. Hey Iwakun. You're here pretty early. Hey stranger. And says you. Oikoa giggles. Well, I didn't want a repeat of last time. Oikoa then digs in his pocket to pull out two tickets. And I got us tickets already. Iwezumi hums in appreciation as he takes one of the tickets. Thanks, I'll Venmo you the money. You look really nice in that color by the way. Oh, thank you. You look nice too. Iwezumi looks down at his outfit, black cargo pants, and a beige hoodie. It was a bit. It's pretty basic. Well it looks really good on you. You love flattering, don't you? Ikoa grins. Only people worth flattering. He takes hold of Iwezumi's hand and tugs him towards the aquarium's entrance. Come on, let's get going. They head to the fish tanks first, which is a standard first stop. The glass walls of the tanks are bigger than Iwezumi could have imagined, and the shoals and schools of fish of all sizes seem to be dancing through the rich blue water. Oikoa seems to think so, too, as he stands with his mouth agape, once in a while whispering wow and glancing at Iwezumi to see if he was experiencing the same feelings. Afterward, they make their way through checking out other exhibits, and along their route, they stumble across a place where they can crack open the pearl shell. The activity earns them each a new, shining pearl necklace that makes Oikoa beam. They finish just in time for the dolphin show, which Iwezumi finds to be impressive but all the tricks and funny one-liners oddly seem to make Oikoa's mood deflate. While the audience applauds after a dolphin does an especially good flip, Iwezumi turns to Oikoa and nudges him with his elbow. Hey, you okay? Um, oh yeah. 
Iwezumi rolls his eyes. Oh don't give me that. What's up? Well, after reading about all the shit that Sea World has done, I always feel a bit sad when I come to these shows. Ah. I wanna just tell you that they're surely treated better here, but that's not too helpful, is it? No, not really. It gets a bit awkward, and Iwezumi doesn't have the right words to say, but once the show is finished, he pulls Oko along to take pictures with the dolphins in hopes that it would make him feel better. It does the trick, just as Iwezumi had hoped, and Oko's cheeriness even convinces Iwezumi to come into the frame so that they'd have a photo together. Upon seeing the photo, Iwezumi has to bite back his impulse to make it his lock screen photo. He can't help the urge, not with the way that Okoa's eyes are on Iwezumi beside him instead of the camera, not with the way that Okoa has the sweetest smile in the photo as he hugs a dolphin, not with the way that Okoa is always oozing just the right amount of sweetness. Hell, if Iwezumi could possibly absorb a bit of that every time he turned on his phone, he'd give it a shot. While Iwezumi is still looking at the photo, he feels Okoa grab onto his hand. Iwezumi looks up to see Okoa with a grin stretching from ear to ear, and Okoa squeezes his hand twice as if to say thank you. Okoa buys what he claims to be chicken nuggets for them to share after that, but when Iwezumi bites into one, the taste is meatier and milder than expected. Ah, uh, Okoa, are you sure these are chicken nuggets? PFFT, yeah. What else would they be? Iwezumi almost believes him. Almost, because there's mischief brewing in Okoa's eyes when Iwezumi meets his gaze. Okoa, what the hell are you feeding me? Dot dot dot. Okoa smiles, then begins to snicker. Shark bites. I, what? Iwezumi quickly grabs a napkin and spits out the nugget he was chewing on, and Okoa, per usual, starts howling. Iwezumi feigns grumpiness after that, but his faux demeanor is broken 20 minutes later when they visit the penguin enclosure and get to feed them. Their final stop is the jellyfish tank, which they left for last at Okoa's insistence. Iwezumi is glad they did, because the sight is, in a word, mesmerizing. There's something fine and delicate about the jellyfish, as if they were made of wispy clouds. They are beautifully luminescent, and the pretty neon lighting shines on Okoa's even prettier face. Okoa has one hand on the glass with his forehead pressed against it, looking absolutely fascinated. His hand still rests in Iwezumi's, though, telling Iwezumi he hasn't been completely forgotten. Hand holding. The one and only thing that had been imperfect about today. Iwezumi and Okoa had held hands since the moment they entered the aquarium and throughout most of their date. Even now, after leaving the aquarium, Okoa swung their hands between them as they strolled to Iwezumi's car. Iwezumi found hand holding disagreeable and a bit too much. He bore the hand holding because Okoa seemed to like it, and Iwezumi likes Okoa, and for that, he's willing to compromise some of his comfort. Nonetheless, he just couldn't understand why people liked it so much. He'd much rather walk alongside someone casually, hands to themselves, showing their contentedness just from being there together. When they finally reach Iwezumi's car, Okoa's hand leaves his, and he feels a weight tumble off his shoulders. The relief makes Iwezumi feel a little guilty, but he pushes the feeling aside as he turns to Okoa now. So. So. I guess this is where we say goodbye. Hey, yeah. I really had fun today Iwa. Okoa grasps both of Iwezumi's hands, and the sudden gesture makes Iwezumi let out an embarrassing little squeak that Okoa thankfully ignores. Did you have fun too? Iwezumi ignores the burning feeling in his hands and smiles with a nod. Of course I did. Phew, I'm happy to hear. I know it hasn't been too long, but I'm really starting to like you, why no? Okoa. Okoa slowly begins to lean down, closer and closer to Iwezumi, and, oh, fuck, he's going to kiss Iwezumi isn't he? Iwezumi was never great with kisses, never knew how to approach them, so he just closes his eyes and waits for Okoa's lips to meet his. He knows that kisses should light up a fire in you, make you feel a rush of emotions that few other things can bring. Iwezumi's never experienced this with past kisses, to no surprise. If he was being honest, he'd describe his past kisses as gross. Not that they were bad kisses, they just didn't feel right. Okoa is different though, so he's sure this kiss will be different too. But when Okoa's soft lips meet his, there's no spark or fireworks lighting up within him. Instead, he feels, icky. When Okoa backs away, grinning so brightly at Iwezumi, Iwezumi has to force a smile to cover up his disappointment. Okoa starts talking, lightly saying goodbye and asking about their next date, but Iwezumi can only listen passively. Instead, Iwezumi focuses on the distance he can already see growing between them, having nothing but a sliver of hope that his feelings could change. Tuesday. 3.09pm. Gay not European. Nothing has changed. What, your feelings for Okoa? Yeah. I've started to accept that they probably won't change. I could have told you that since you talked about your kiss from the second date man. How many dates has it been now? Four? Five? We're planning on going on the sixth in two weeks. I have a feeling he's going to ask me to be his boyfriend at the end of this one. Bro you've got to put a stop to this. You don't like him. Yeah. You're just leading him on at this point, and you know that's really shitty. I love you and I'm closer to you, but Okoa is still one of my good friends and I'm not gonna stand and watch this. I know, I know. I've just been in denial that I don't see him that way. I really want to. He's a pretty amazing person. So how exactly do you feel about him? I'm attracted to his looks. I can't pinpoint the other feelings. The closest I can get to describing them is by saying they're sort of like feelings I'd have for a close friend. So it's not romantic? I don't know. I don't fucking know. I'm really frustrated. There's this great guy right in front of me who'd make a great partner, but I can't bring myself to think of actually being in a relationship with him. I really hope that he'd be different. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm sorry you feel this way I were. 
I don't know anyone that's experienced this kind of thing before, and I'm having a really hard time putting myself in your shoes. Same. Maybe check out online forums and stuff. That's a good idea. I'm sure there's people out there who feel similarly about dating and relationships. Just gotta look for them. Maybe. I'll try it out. Sorry we couldn't help much. It's alright. I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah. Don't forget we're here if you need to talk more Iwa. Thanks guys. I'll get going on that web search now. Matsuko waving goodbye. Bye bye. Matsuko had been right. There were loads of other people, a whole community, in fact, that didn't experience romantic attraction in the way most people did. Rather, they didn't experience it at all. The immense relief that Iwazumi felt now was indescribable, however, he wished he'd thought to do this sooner. After hours on Google, Iwazumi came to the realization that he'd never once had a crush. Sure, people had appealed to him aesthetically, but that wasn't exactly a crush. Iwazumi liked the idea of a long-term partner, but only if the relationship was mutually platonic. Perhaps that's why he couldn't comprehend the feelings Hanamaki portrayed whenever he talked about his boyfriend. Perhaps that's why he always felt out of place when he was discussing his love life with others. Perhaps that's why dating felt like a chore. Perhaps that's why he could never maintain a relationship for more than two weeks. And, perhaps that's why he had been drawn to Akua greatly from the start, though the love Adove feelings he'd been waiting for to erupt never did. His attraction was simply non-romantic. When his next planned date with Akua is only a few days away, Iwazumi decides that it would be better to end things with Akua sooner than later. So, in the late afternoon, after gathering all his thoughts, he makes himself comfortable in his bed and clicks through his phone until he finds Akua's contact. Akua is the first person he's sharing his discovery with, and nervousness rattles through Iwazumi's body. But then he remembers that it's Aikoa, who's nothing if not one of the most considerate people that Iwazumi's ever met. With that in mind, Iwazumi holds his breath as he clicks the call button. The phone rings once, twice, then three times before Aikoa picks up. Hello. Iwachan? Iwazumi let out a strangled breath and grunts, making Aikoa laugh. That's definitely you. Ugh, I hate that nickname. Why? It's cute like you. It feels condescending. Don't look at it that way Iwachan. Now I know how Kindechi feels. Kindechi? Your roommate? Just saying, calling you Iwa-chan is way nicer than you calling him Onion Head. Anyway, what do you call me for? Oh, um. Iwazumi clears his throat to speak, but when he opens his mouth, the words don't come. His phone speaker crackles as Ikoa sighs. You're going to tell me you don't like me, aren't you? Iwazumi's eyes go wide as saucers. How did you? I can tell. I get the feeling that I'm hanging out with a good friend whenever we go on dates. And you basically drip with discomfort whenever I do something particularly romantic or affectionate. I, I can explain. There's no need. It's not your fault if you don't like me. Akua barks out a humorless laugh. I just wish you'd told me earlier, because now I'm stuck with a fat crush on. I'm a romantic. Dot dot dot. Huh? I'm a romantic. It, it means I don't experience romantic attraction. I experience aesthetic attraction, and I can develop strong platonic feelings for someone, and I can feel the need to get really close to them, but none of it is romantic. That's what I'm feeling towards you. I learned that this stuff even existed literally less than two weeks ago, and it's still confusing to me, so I don't expect you to get it. But please know that I really do enjoy you, and I like you a lot. Just not in the way that you like me. I just can't have something romantic with you, or anyone for that matter. I just never fully understood that until now. It sounds cliche, but... It's not you, it's me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to let you on, but I did, and I'm sorry. The other line is completely silent for five minutes, and Iwazumi pulls his phone from his ear to see if Ikoa has hung up. But the call is still going, and Iwazumi soon hears Ikoa sighing deeply. I can't say I completely understand it, because I'm not you. But I get it enough, I think. If I'm understanding correctly, you don't feel romance like most people do, and you didn't even know because you felt other things you just labeled as romantic feelings. I, it does hurt like hell to hear this after seeing you for almost three months. I think I'd still like us to be friends though. Once my feelings subside of course. I really enjoy you too Iwa-chan, and I don't feel like the time I've spent with you was a complete waste. And, I forgive you, though I don't think there's really anything to forgive. Iwazumi's heart swells. Ikoa really is too damn good for this world. Friendship works. It sounds really nice, actually. Ikoa laughs a little. I'm glad. And, I'm also glad you told me about this new identity you've uncovered Iwa-chan. You know, I'd say that's brave of you. Iwazumi isn't sure that he's brave at all. Really, Ikoa is the brave one, always so bold and honest that it brings Iwazumi to be the same way. Ikoa has a strange, thrilling effect on him, and Iwazumi longs to continue experiencing it. Yet, it's scary. Iwazumi is a piece that doesn't fit into the puzzle of society's conventional view of love and relationships, and it's up to him to evaluate the kind of relationship he has truly sought throughout his life. The kind of relationships he wanted with special people like Aikoa, people he felt a peculiar platonic attraction to. Attraction was confusing, but hopefully, it'd now begin to make more sense.